Welcome to How to Make a Coal Fired Steam Engine Boiler Plant. This is part 6 Making the Chimney Mounting for the Superheater. This is my acid bath in the outer part of the workshop. Quite a few people have shown a lot of interest in it lately. This acid bath is not full of sulfuric acid though, it is full of Kilrock K Kettle Descaler and it cleans up the brass and copper parts beautifully. And I've just removed the boiler top cap from the acid bath. I rinsed it in water first to remove all the acid. So I need to clean off the residue and polish up the top part of the cap. And for this I'm using good old Brasso wadding and elbow grease. And it's coming up quite well. But I did remove most of the tarnish on my polishing spindle first. This is just a finer polish. I don't generally like white t-shirts so I use them as cloths. And here I'm using one of my old t-shirts to polish up the top cap. And as you can see it's quite a good finish. It's not exactly a mirror finish. I don't really think I want a mirror finish. Plus when of course the boiler's in steam, this will tarnish and get duller. You can see from this clip that I also enlarged the hole in the centre of the top cap. I did video this, but something went wrong with the video camera. I think the SD card is about ready for retirement. While the video camera was malfunctioning, I also made this. This is the superheater enclosure and chimney support. No great loss there on the video front because it was a very simple piece of plain turning and boring. I mean boring from the inside, but really it was also quite a boring turning job too. Just looking at it should tell you how to make it. I made it from a solid piece of brass, so now there are very sharp brass chippings all over my lathe, all over the floor near the lathe, and some of them are in my finger. I can't decide whether to use bolts or rivets to hold this part to the top cap. Either way, I'm going to drill the holes using this thing. It's called a rotary table. It also has a four-jaw chuck on the top of it that's not bolted in place. And it has degrees around the side, not to 360. I will be covering the use of this in detail when I start to use it. I thought I would take this opportunity to have a good look at this small pump. I know there are one or two leaks around the steam chest cover, but that's not a problem. The main problem is it's quite tight. But really, that's because it needs running in. It's never been really run much. And currently I'm giving this a run. I oiled it thoroughly in every area, including the water chest, because the water pistons are lubricated by the water going through the pump. And as there isn't any water going through the pump, I was a bit concerned that they would wear out. So I put some oil in there. While the engine was running, I took the opportunity to clean up the lathe. These brass chippings, as I mentioned earlier, are all over the place. Because when you start to reduce large lumps of brass to hollow shells, it makes a lot of swarf. But one has to suffer for one's art, darling. This superheater stroke chimney mount is going to have four connections in it. To illustrate this, I'm going to use some commercial fittings, but these are not the right size. I need to make special one-off fittings and I'll be detailing this in another episode. And the first hole to be drilled in the piece is the one for the wet steam inlet. I'm drilling almost all the way through with the centre drill first, and when doing this it's very important to make sure the piece is accurately mounted in the machine vise, because the next operation is to drill through from the top hole to the bottom, and the drill is going to wander very badly if this is not perfectly square in the machine vise. The fittings for the steam inlet and outlet for the superheater are going to be 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. So I need a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole, but I'm using a quarter inch drill first. Then, if there are any errors, I can use a file to correct them before drilling to the final size. I need to keep the weight down on the spoiler, so I'm losing metal wherever I can. And also, I need to machine the flange perfectly flat. I originally machined the outside of this component with a round nose tool and you can see that on the very outside edge and on the first step. But the bottom step needs to be perfectly square because this is going to be bolted to the top cap and it would be no good if it was at an angle. Back onto the bench and here's the progress so far. In this clip you can clearly see the wet steam inlet on one side and the dry steam outlet on the other side. But the superheater element, or in this case steam dryer coil, needs to be made in one piece, so I'm going to turn some special fittings up from this piece of hexagon bar. More about this in another episode. I drilled another two holes in the fitting. 
One of them is for the exhaust inlet, and this one, the smaller one, is for the blower inlet. And of course you've already seen the wet steam inlet and the dry steam outlet. The steam inlet and outlet is really a straight through connection, and all that is in between these two connections is a coil of tubing inside the housing. And as this coil is going to be immediately above the fire tubes, it will get hot and dry the steam. When I put the fitting in place, you can get the idea. Originally, I had the safety valve positioned in the centre hole. But now, as I'm busking this, I've no preconceived idea of exactly how it's going to finish. I'm going to put the blower valve in the centre hole, because it's the obvious place for it, and it's going to be very easy to line it up with the fitting. I think today I will pay a visit to Blackgate's Engineering and buy some copper tubing to make the chimney. But once again, that's in another episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.